Hi everyone, I'm Linda Diano. I'm with The Power and Sport, and today I have the great pleasure of interviewing Luke Bruchet, who is the 2013 Canadian Cross Country Running Champion here in Canada. And uh, we're just going to spend a little time with him. And th that Luke, thanks so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. It's great. Yeah, it's nice to meet you and uh, get some of your energy. So I wanted to, just for everyone listening, they want to know a little bit about who you are. You grew up in White Rock and you run at UBC and, and you have had quite a number of accomplishments uh, over the years as a junior national team runner. And I'm just glancing over at my bio here. And then also in the past year alone, running the 5,000 on the track, uh, coming uh, in the top four at the Canadian Nationals, and then also running at the University Games uh, in the 5,000, making the finals there, uh, and so on, and to actually now winning the Canadian Cross Country Championships. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, everything's uh, starting to come together, I guess. Yeah, it's great. So is there, um, in that list there, what would be a highlight for you so far in your career? Uh, I think the past summer when I was in uh, at the World University Games in Russia, that was definitely the most exciting kind of sporting endeavor I've been involved in. Uh, in the final, just walking out with the other 12 or 15 athletes into a stadium filled with 50,000 people there to watch you run was it was very powerful. It was very exciting. I mean, your, your heart kind of skips a beat, but uh, that that's definitely the one that stands out the most so far. And does that uh, give you a taste of maybe what's to come, what could come for you? Does that kind I, of... I, I hope so. It's, uh, I mean, I want to get back to something like that, you know, in the near future. It's definitely motivating to continue to, to be there. So one, one of the things I like to do with everyone when I start is I like to ask just a couple fun questions uh, just to, you know, play a little bit. So here's the question. If you were on a deserted island, what three foods would you take with you? Three foods. Uh, that's tough. Um, I got to go with pizza. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if I can just have one kind of pizza, but I'd have to go with pizza. Um... Oh, that's, that's really tough. Orange juice, probably. Got to get my vitamin C with lots of pulp. Orange juice with lots of pulp. And, uh, oh, I don't know what else the other one would be. Maybe some carrots. I don't know. It'd be, it'd be tough. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I, uh, I met John Herdman, who's the uh, head coach of the national women's soccer team. I asked him the same question. He said broccoli, bananas, and butter chicken. <laughs> a little different than what I said. Just only a tiny bit. All right, uh, just switching gears here, and you you may have uh, you may have already alluded to this in your earlier comments about the university games, and uh, but I wanted to ask you if you have um, an example or a little short story you can give us about a real inspired moment for you where you were inspired to be bolder, bigger or to pursue your dreams. And the reason I'm asking you that is that people listening, I, I really uh, think want to hear examples where people are inspired to be bigger than themselves so that they also can, can see that that exists in their life. Yeah, for sure. Um, in my first year, year of university, I made the junior national team for cross country and we traveled to the world championships in Poland. And uh, on the team that year, there was uh, only one senior athlete uh, Simon Beiru. And, uh, so, I mean, our ju the junior men team ran, the junior women ran, and then, you know, we got to watch Simon run and, uh, well, you know, Simon's Canadian and cross countries and distance running is a fairly a African dominated sport. You know, typically in the world champ, like cross country championships, the top 20 will be filled with, you know, a bunch of Eastern Africans. But, uh, we watched Simon run and he finished 13th at world, which was the highest place I think for a Canadian athlete ever. I just remember watching the race and, you know, almost running, you know, half the race with him, just screaming at him and, and watching him just pick people off the whole way. And I think for me, seeing a Canadian up there and, you know, really challenging, you know, some of the top runners in the world, that was, it, it just inspired me to be, you know, every day, just try and become better and try and do something, accomplish something like that. 
So someone else at the elite level inspired you. That's a that's great. I mean, that's what we're finding a lot is people are inspired by other people. You know. Um, thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask you, just in your own career so far, what what has been your biggest breakthrough to, to date? So, and, and I'm asking that because I think people want to hear about. Um, to see that there are examples in people's past of uh, breakthroughs that inspire them to to charge ahead and break through even more. Um, I think the the big one for me would have been last year at the Canadian Cross Country Championships. I, I finished fifth and uh, I came off an injury in the summer and you know had kind of changed up a little bit with coaching, a little bit with uh, I guess training philosophy and you know the, I never really had a goal for cross country. It was just to you know put in some good mileage, get, you know, nice and fit. And uh, the Canadian championships were, were at Jericho, like they were this year, uh, except it was a much more uh, beautiful day. It was sunny, a little different than this year. But uh, I went out there and, you know, I had lots of friends and family there and I just, uh, I, I fin like I said, I finished fifth and I think I surprised everybody, even myself. And I think that was kind of the first time I really proved to myself that, uh, you know, I can, I could run with the big boys. I can, you know, I can be one of the best in Canada. And I think, you know, that was the kind of really big breakthrough for me, kind of opened my eyes a bit. And did you have like a, like a key attitude or, you know, uh, mantras or anything that you were, you know, focusing on in the months leading up to that? Like, could you, could you see that you were mentally thinking something that, um, for me, it was just the the main focus I had was just keep keep working hard, keep working hard, and you know, good things will come. Um, I, to be honest, with that race, I didn't really focus on it until two or three weeks leading up to it. And as soon as that, you know, the two three weeks leading up to it, I kind of changed my attitude towards it. You know, I can run with these guys, I can belong with them. I, you know, I just got to go out there and give everything I have, and you know, it, good things will happen. And that's what it, you know. So what happened in the end? I made the uh, made my first senior national team and first big breakthrough, I guess. Right, and then that got you to the world uh, cross country cross championship. Country. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Now, and and how has that experience influenced what happened this year when you actually won the the senior men's cross country here in Canada? Um, the world cross country championships was it was kind of ironic actually. It was held in the same city when I was a junior. So three years earlier, it was the same city the same course, uh, a little, a little different weather. It was about minus five and completely covered in snow. But, uh, I think it was just another confidence thing, you know, just sticking it out or running in with the big, you know, the senior athletes, I was still, you know, I was the youngest kid on the team. Um, so I think just being around those, those older athletes that have experienced international competitions and the success, you know, you kind of learn from that and how to handle it. And, you know, when I first went into it, I was like, I kind of doubted myself. Maybe I didn't belong, belong with these guys. You know, maybe I'm not as good as them, but you know, they just kind of reinforced that you, you do belong there. You proved it at the national championships. And then I think when it came around this year at Jericho, I just had the, I went in with the idea that I was, I guess one of the better athletes and you know, you run with that confidence and you're not afraid to, uh, to go out and run hard or, you know, put a surgeon or something like that. And, and, uh, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it definitely, the confidence definitely helped this year. Mm -hmm. And, and because you had a breakthrough at last year's cross country championships, right? Where you said, okay, I, I proved to myself, I can run with the big boys. Did that in itself influence this year's uh, national event? Uh, I think so. I think last year I was, I was looking up to the, uh, the athletes that were, I knew were ahead of me a little more this year. I think I considered myself one of them. And I, you know, last year, maybe that was the big breakthrough, but I would also think this year winning that race was another big breakthrough. Um, you know, stepping up from, you know, fifth or sixth in the country to, you know, number one. I know we were missing a few of the the athletes that were there last year, the, some of them that have competed at the Olympics. But, uh, you know, I just went out there with, uh, with confidence that, you know, came from last year's race and being at the World Cross Country Championships. And, you know, you can't run afraid. You can't be afraid to do anything. You just got to go out there and be confident and, and uh, things will work out most of the time.
nice well said confidence does a lot that's great and now you get to build on that right Keep exactly going. just more fuel for the fire yeah um, I wanted to just step back and ask you um, uh, just a little bit so now you've had these breakthroughs who who are the people that have helped you get to this point I mean there's there's a lot uh, my parents for sure uh, they you know they financially emotionally they've been there for me the whole way especially my mom uh, I almost quit in grade eight you know I came into high school and I at the high school I was at cross country track and field it wasn't like a it wasn't one of the cool sports. I don't, you know, when you come into high school, grade eight, everybody's playing volleyball or basketball or rugby. And, you know, you know, you're wearing split shorts or something and everybody's kind of laughing at you, but you, she, you know, she kept me in it. She, she put her foot down and said, you're not stopping. You're good at this. Uh, you know, maybe you could go somewhere with it. So I stuck it out. Um, they've been along the whole way. I mean, there's obviously been bumps with injuries on, you know, bumps along the road, injuries, stuff like that. They've always been there supporting me. Uh, you know, other than, you know, prior two years, I had a string of 24 months of just consistent injuries, but they've always been there to, you know, keep me at it, keep me motivated. Um, my high school coach, Ben Coden, and I guess he was the first coach I ever really had, and he really believed in me, which I think was, you know, something that always helps. Uh, you always want someone to, you know, support you and believe in you, believe you can do things. And uh, that was my first real coach, and he really you know, got me to love the sport, I guess. And then along the way, you know, transitioning to University of America, UBC, you know, provided me the opportunity to compete on an international level with UBC. He's helped out with school, obviously. Um, Richard Lee, now I'm working with Richard as well. And that whole group, uh, BC Endurance Project, where, you know, I mean, it's in the grassroots, it's just starting up, but, you know, they're continuing to help me as well. You know, numerous athletes on the, along the way, older athletes, yeah. There's so many that, you know, you, you, I mean, I could just list off a bunch, but I think, you know, Merrick, my high school coach, my parents have been the big ones along the way. Yeah, it, can't, it, it takes a village, right? That's uh, something I just want to em emphasize and underscore for everyone. It just takes a village. It's, uh, we think we do things all by ourselves, but we really just, uh, to get to no, that. It's I mean, there's especially, I mean, running, it may seem like an individual sport. You're out there by yourself, but it's a, it's a team. It's behind the scenes. There's your, so many people that are involved, whether it's your, you know, physio or massage, your coaches, your parents, your, even your friends and family. Like it's, it's so motivating, you know, especially I, I really draw off that is especially like at, when we were at Jericho this year, I have friends, family, and they're all out there cheering. And I really, I really, it really helps. It really pushes me. I just, you know, I, I don't know if I want to sometimes put on a bit of a show or, you know, I, I give back, I guess, you know, make it exciting for them. But there's a lot of people there that help out. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. I can see you feel, uh, you feel something about it anyways, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned you, you had injuries for, what did you say? 24 months straight? I think through, you know, the, the better part of first year until my third year university. So it was almost two years straight. I, you know, I had, it, if it wasn't something, it was something else. And I just you know, had to deal with a lot of adversity for the first few years. I almost wanted to quit, uh, you know, quit the sport. Mm -hmm. But uh, I remember calling my dad one night. I think I was walking to the pool to go cross training. And I told him I didn't want to waste any more time you know I so, yeah it was you put so much time into it and when you don't see the benefits it's hard to hard to stay at it but you know my dad was there to kind of just you know you got to look long term you can't you can't expect I guess short-term results especially in running it doesn't just come all of a sudden you gotta you gotta work hard and uh you know he, he kept me focused or he kept you know long-term goals I guess and I've pulled through, I guess. Yeah, I was going to ask you, um, just making notes here, I was going to ask you, what were some of the key attitudes that you had that helped you get through that, to help you stay stay the course? You know, because it would have been just so easy to... I, I mean, it's just, quit. ultimately, it's just my, my dream, you know, the dream of one day compete, you know, representing Canada at the Olympics. Ever since I was 
you know, four or five years old, I've only, I've, my, my life has just revolved around sport, whether I, you know, I wanted to play in the NHL when I was, you know, five years old, or I wanted to play in the NBA. I've, all I've ever wanted to do is achieve like the highest level of sport ever. And I think ultimately just, I overlooked that, I guess, when I was injured and I didn't, I, 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 I mean, it, it's hard sometimes when you're so stressed and so emotional with all those injuries and, you know, never being able to consistently work at your sport or whatever. Um, it, the dream was overlooked, but I think ultimately I was able to just kind of relax and look back and, you know, this, you know, five, five week span ultimately isn't going to mean anything, you know, once I get healthy and I'm going to, you know, once I figure it out, I'm going to be able to work hard and, and accomplish that dream. What, what would you say if you could say something to people that are injured right now or kind of going through a rough time with whatever their dream is, right? Whatever it is, what would you say to them? I think uh, you just have to, if it's your dream, it's your, you know, your one goal that you want to accomplish, uh, you, you just have to look towards that. You can't, you can't focus on the now, the injury. You have to, you have to take it for what it is and it, it may be unfortunate, but in the, in the long term, um, it's just another stepping stone. You're going to learn, you know, about yourself, about your body, and you're going to just, it's going to make you stronger and, uh, don't lose sight of that dream. Cool. Excellent. Thank you. Cause I mean, we all face lumps and bumps, right? Everyone goes down at some point and, uh, it's how we come back, right? They say, that's it. It's how you come back. It's not, it's not being the down. It's how you come out of it. So it's great to hear. Um, I just wanted to expand a little bit more and if you had, um, you know, people that you looked up to, historical figures, whether it's in, in sport, Canadian sport, world sport, not, not contemporary now, but historical people, um, who, you know, who's in some ways allowed you to be here at this level, who, do you have any people that come to mind? I don't know if you can call it historical, but uh, he's still like Simon Whitfield. It's hard not to be, you know, a Canadian athlete, especially in a sport like running, and not look up to him. Um, I mean, he's still relative. Uh, he just retired recently, so I don't know if you can call him historical. But uh, he, uh, I mean, he was one of the best in the world, and he won the inaugural triathlon at the 2000 Olympics, and. I watched that, you know, the video of his last few minutes, the sprint to the finish, just watching that and watching him cross the line and, and the excitement that he shows. And, you know, it just, it's something that I want to feel one day crossing the line and doing something like that. And, uh, he, I guess he would, he would be one guy that I, you know, I look up to or his accomplishments I look up to. Um, there's, I mean, there's other athletes that you can, you can take bits and pieces and things they've done or things they, things they are and, and apply it to how you want to be. But it's, it's hard to just pick, you know, if one or two people that have really made an impact, I think I, for me, I'd like to take certain aspects of people's personalities or how they work and, and try and apply that. Yeah. Rather right. Rather than one person wholesale. Are there any female athletes that, uh, Canadian or otherwise that you that inspire you um yeah I, it's it's probably not your typical athlete but uh Caster Semenya she was yeah she it's I mean I learned a lot about her last year in uh in one of the classes I was taking at UBC and then this past summer when we were in Finland uh she was actually at the same training camp with uh as us and she's she's had to deal with so much scrutiny from the media and so much adversity uh with all of the stuff that's i mean surrounding her the issue of gender and you know she she wanted to stop she wanted to quit but you know she obviously loves track and field and she's able to go out and just continue to do what she loves and continue to work hard and, and I, I mean i've never been placed in the media like that like she has but to overcome something like that and continue to do what you love is, is pretty powerful. Yeah, and just for everyone who's listening, if you don't know who Castor Semenya is, she's a South African 
uh, 800 meter runner who burst onto the scene at the Olympic level um, and I think it was world championships and underwent enormous public uh, scrutiny about her gender and uh, speculation about her ability to run so quickly and went through some very grueling uh, what you can only call as violation of of herself and uh, their legal lawsuits around that but yeah she um, uh, the fact that she came back and you know has continued to compete at the international level says a lot about her strength and her courage and uh, she definitely is an inspirational person I'm not sure she would think she is but she certainly has yeah that's a great um, great person to uh, reflect on uh, just moving on to um, uh, just back to you a little bit um, looking forward what are you what are you eyeing what's your next breakthrough you're targeting uh hopefully the commonwealth games this summer um that's that's the next kind of uh i guess the next site the next big goal i'd like to accomplish uh not sure what the they haven't released the standards yet but um that that's that's the short-term dream that's the the next goal the next breakthrough i want to accomplish and um, how are you building up to that breakthrough? What are some of like what are the top things that you're doing to put you there? Uh, trying to trying to do everything right, whether it's you know sleep, diet, um, working working hard in practice. Now that we have the uh, BC Endurance Project out here, you know I'm living with another high class athlete. We've got a, we're surrounded by a bunch of high class athletes. Um, every you know everything's coming together whether it's you know physio or massage when we need it being in the gym lifting weight lifting weights some skinny runners lifting weights not not a pretty sight but you know we have to do it uh you know whether it's working hard on the track or waking up early to go to the pool um we're just trying to do absolutely everything uh the right way mm -hmm. and if yeah. you were if you were to say a couple words about your mental attitude um, do you, can you put that into words for me? Just, uh, what your mental attitude is like about making that breakthrough? Um, I, I guess my mental attitude is just, you know, it's, it's just continuing to work hard. Um, it, you have to make sacrifices to do that. And I, you know, I don't get a chance to hang out with some of my, uh, good buddies that I used to live with or. Or whatnot, because you know they maybe they're going out for a beer or something, and I can't do that. I I gotta be in bed. I gotta be at home, making sure I'm well rested for the next workout or the next day. So, I mean, it it, it does at times. It's difficult to kind of sacrifice things that you love, but in in the long term, when I, you know, when I get to the Olympics or when I get to the World Championships or something like that, it's gonna be worth it. So, it's all worth it in the end. And you know, I gotta work hard now and get there. And you know, the, I guess the rewards will happen after. Absolutely. It's, you know, the time is now, right? Exactly. It's not something you can put off and do in five years. It's, it's now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you if you uh, have thought about a declaration for yourself and uh, if you're ready to put that into words for us. I think so. Yeah? I think so. I think I'm ready. Okay. So here, here it is. You just start with the words, I declare, and then you take it from there. All right. Uh, I declare that I will do everything in my power to uh, accomplish my athletic dreams. I think that's, uh, I think that's it. I think everything in my power is, I try to encompass everything, whether it's, you know, making the sacrifices, overcoming the obstacles, you know, working as hard as I can, uh, you know, doing everything right. And, and like I said earlier, like ever since I've been four or five, my only dreams, my only real dreams, I guess, have been, you know, to compete at the Olympics. And I don't think I'll stop until, until that happens. Well, I feel honored that you would share that with us. Thank you. And uh, may it happen and happen quick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, one thing about the power in sport, which is the just little part where I, uh, plug the power in sport, um, one thing that's really essential to what we're doing is uh, recognizing the breakthrough that's going on for sport with the FIFA Women's World Cup of uh, Soccer coming in 2015. It'll be the largest World Cup for women ever. 
and they're estimating 1.5 million tickets to be sold in, across six Canadian cities and uh, obviously there'll be a huge television audience and so on. And so with that in mind, because it's a breakthrough for Canadian sport and women in sport here in Canada, I'm asking uh, everyone to declare 2015 as the year of women in sport. And would you do that? Of course, I do. I do declare that uh, 2015 is the year of women in sport. Right on. Um, okay, we're coming to the end here. I want to thank you so much, and I want to give you one more chance. Uh, it's kind of fun. Um, if everyone in the world was listening to you right now, imagine all 7 billion people were leaning in and listening to you live, what one thing would you say to them? Uh, don't stop chasing your dreams.